All right, so today I'm gonna to show you how to make the best linguine and clam sauce that I know how to make. And this one starts with a uh, East Coast steamer clam or soft shell clam. Uh, these are stunning. Uh, I have a couple pounds of them that I had uh, sent to me from the East Coast. Um, they're washed. Uh, I washed them in seawater uh, that I replicated by essentially adding uh, two and a half to three teaspoons of sea salt to every liter of cold water and let them purge themselves. Purging them in flour, cornstarch, or corn flour is a myth. Uh, you can see here that these are alive, uh, which is a great, uh, great benefit. Um, I love the flavor of these and they're a lot easier to deal with in some sense than uh, conventional uh, hard shell clams like uh, cherry stones or little necks, uh, which I love using for this, but the flavor of a steamer clam and the broth it produces is second to none. I'm gonna fortify that broth with some white wine. I'm going to cook off some pasta. They didn't have linguine at the market, so I got angel hair, what can I say? Uh, supply chain. Uh, some hot chilies, lots of thinly sliced garlic and shallots and oregano. For this, I use dried oregano. And I'm gonna make, I'm gonna fortify my broth with the white wine, but also with celery, carrot, and onion. So I have a really, really, really rich broth that comes from the steamers that I'm gonna then add olive oil and parsley and all this wonderful garlic uh, and seasonings to it and make what is to me the, the ultimate summertime uh, pasta recipe. You ready to do it? Let's do it. Step one, take some incredible olive oil. There's lots of different kinds. This is one of my favorites. It's the, uh, the Moshi oil from uh, La Boite. You can see the website there if you're interested in grabbing some. And I'm adding a couple of glugs of that to my pot over low heat. Step one. All right, step two, add my celery, carrot, onion, or shallot into that pot and gently sweat those vegetables in the olive oil for, I don't know, five minutes, seven minutes. We're gonna let that cook for a little while. Soften all those vegetables and really bring out all the flavor uh, in what is essentially a, a mirepoix that doesn't have liquid added to it yet. So the vegetables, the oil, the wine, and the water has been cooking together for a while, and I'm going to add my cleaned clams in there. They are going to give off a ton of their own liquid. So I put them in to that incredible vegetable corbouillon, put a lid on that, and I'm gonna cook them for about, I don't know, five, seven minutes until they open. Uh, remember, they were very cold going in there, so, you know, they certainly don't need more than seven. They may be done in five, we'll see. And I'm gonna toss the pot a little bit in about halfway through so they cook evenly. So let me show you how to toss the pot. All you do is grab the edges and give it a little shake. That rotates the clams. That's it. Okay, so these have been cooking for the right amount of time and I'm taking my wand and I'm going in and I'm gonna scoop these out. If you get some veg, don't worry. The key element here is that we're leaving any broken shell or sediment in the bottom of the pot. All the clams have opened. It's also why I'm using this wand so that anything falls back down in there. We're gonna strain that incredible clam broth that's been fortified with the wine, with the vegetables, with the olive oil and we'll pull those clams from the shell after we strain that liquid. All right, so these handles are now hot. All of that magic elixir is there at the bottom. And you see how I have one of these fine, fine mesh permanent coffee strainers in my glass carafe. It's actually perfect for this. 
The vegetables act as a little barrier. The heavy little pieces of shell particle and anything the clams didn't spit out when I purge them will stay behind. And I'm essentially just pouring clam juice consomme into the bottom of my carafe. And let me show you what's left behind at the very, very bottom as this slowly but surely drips through. Do you see there in that back left corner, you can actually start to see the sand. Yep, that's how much comes out. And that's after I purge them. And I'm a really good purger. But if you go really slow and tilt it very slow, you'll leave all the dirt behind. Then the strainer will pick up other pieces and you'll be left with perfect clam broth for your pasta. So while my water is coming to a boil for my pasta, I'm gonna clean my clams. I take the top shell off, I put that there. I grab this little piece of filament and take that off, slide the whole clam out. And then these little snouts are covered in a little extension of that filament. And so all you wanna do is just peel them off and discard it. And there is a perfect soft shell clam or steamer clam. Of course, I had to pick the two absolute worst clams to show you how to clean them. One with too small a snout and one with a piece of uh, broken shell. If you see any dirt behind, you can always rinse these uh, in broth or just with a little bit of warm water. Um, but with the technique I just showed you, there's there's no need, they are, here's a nice one. They're absolutely pristine and clean because we purged the sand out of the bodies themselves and anything that was left behind in the shell, because remember these live in sand and mud, um, went to the bottom of our liquid. So again, we just do that with all of our clams and then we're ready to make our pasta. All right, so I've got my saute pan, a high sided saute pan on medium heat. And I'm gonna add a really big glug of olive oil. This is an olive oil based sauce. And because I don't wanna scorch my garlic, I'm just gonna add, and it's thinly shaved. I mean, thinly shaved. I have my shallots that are thinly shaved. I have my hot chilies here. I like dried hot chilies. These are uh, little dried Senegalese chilies. Use about a tablespoon of red chili flake if that's what you have. I'm going to add some dried oregano, which I prefer for this recipe. And then all I'm gonna do is hold back my parsley till the last minute. And I'm just gonna let this warm up in the oil. Oh, whoops, there's a piece of shallot that didn't belong. Again, I have this on a medium heat, and when I start to see any sizzle, I'm gonna turn it down to the lowest setting I have and really let all of the garlic, shallot, chili, and oregano flavor bloom in the oil before I proceed with the rest of the dish. Now, I typically do this with linguine, but they were out of linguine at the store, so I'm doing it with angel hair, and I'm doing this in a small pot of water because angel hair doesn't require um, an awful lot of um, time to cook. These will fold down in the water really quickly. They take two, three minutes to reach al dente and I'll strain them. But what's more important is that I kind of want that starchy water because I'm gonna use that in my pasta if I need to. And we're just gonna make sure that this angel hair gets nicely and evenly cooked again three, four minutes in boiling water and the angel hair will be done. We're gonna add it to our mixture over here, which is simmering on the stove. It's not burning or anything like that. There's too much liquid with all those onions and everything. I have this on a very, very low setting. And all we'll do is add some of our broth and clams and bring it all together. So I know the pasta is almost done, so I wanna make sure these clams, which are room temperature, get a chance to warm up again in that olive oil, garlic, and shallot mixture. I'm gonna help it all out and add 
I don't know, about a half a cup of our clam broth homemade. The rest of this I'm gonna put in a container and freeze because it is so valuable. It's, it's like liquid gold. And then probably the last thing that I'm gonna do is yes, believe it or not, another little glug of olive oil because this is an olive oil based uh, sauce. We'll drain our pasta into that, add our parsley and we'll be done. All right, we just drained our linguine. It's nice and al dente. And you can see we're starting to simmer up all that in there. I am very heavy in my ratio of clams and shallots and garlic to pasta. Why? Well, because I think most places don't let you enjoy the, the thing you're eating for, just the clams. I hate linguine and clam sauce when there's like 12 clams in it and a bunch of, you know, and some broth. Um, so you'll notice that as I stir this, the liquid seems to be disappearing. And that's because, well, you can always add more, but what's really important here is that that liquid gets absorbed by the pasta. So the pasta has that incredible flavor, the saltiness of the clams and broth, the sweetness of the shallots and the garlic. Yes, they're very sweet uh, right now. And I'm just gonna let that cook for 30 seconds and divide it between two bowls. All right, so I'm just gonna put in a big handful of that fresh parsley in there and divide my pasta into these two bowls because I've made the perfect amount for two. Oh, I can smell the wine in there. God, is that just unbelievable. And then all of this in here, I'm going to divide right on top. And there you have it. That is, that's the taste of summer to me. That's growing up in Long Island where we would have this dish three, four times a week. That is the dish of my dreams. And I think the best way to make linguine with clam sauce. So try it, let me know what you think. All right, so you may have noticed there was one thing I did not add, and that was salt. Because if there's anything saltier than clam broth, I don't know what it is. But boy, oh boy, is this a great way to enjoy one of my favorite things in the whole world, which are soft shelled or steamer clams. Mm. Just the perfect balance. It just is the perfect balance. You recreate this dish at home and let me know. I think you will be thrilled and so much better than eating linguine with clam sauce made with six little necks or cherry stones. It just, it just doesn't, it just doesn't compare.